Man, welcome back to the Texas Real Estate Jake podcast. My name is Jake. That's Real Estate Jake to you. It's kind of like black gold or Texas tea. Let it roll off the tip of your tongue like that. That's right. So listen, hey, I told you when we got started, you know, real estate, one of the, the key things about real estate is you got to find the right people to work with, okay? So I'm going to go into 2023 just trying to get you some great people to work with that uh, that could help you with your real estate endeavor. So the reason why I bring this guy in is because not only have I worked with him in the past, man, I got to tell you something. He loves to get his hands dirty in the work of the business. And the favorite thing that I like about my friend, Matt, is that, uh, and you, you guys might think this is crazy or it's no big deal, but he answers the phone. Okay. He answers the phone. So you, you, you gotta, if you're in real estate, you gotta learn how to answer the phone. Good Lord. Anyhow. So I'll bring in Matt cause I, I want to introduce you to him and he helped me out in so many deals this past year. Even, even if he wasn't the one in the deal, he was still a great help. So without further ado, I, I, I'm going to bring in my friend, Mr. Matt Massey to you. He's with cross country mortgage. So I want to introduce you. What's going on, man? How you Good doing? Morning, sir. How are you? I'm well, man. So, hey, forgive me, my friend. So mm -hmm. thank you for coming on, man. All right. So listen, we're going to get into some things here today. And uh, uh, I'm going to start with a scenario. How's that? Go for it. So last time that I called you, I was calling you because we had some kind of issue <laughs> that a deal fell apart. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, dude, how do these things fall apart? How do how do we get all this way? And somebody's stuff just pulls up and goes, you know, it goes raw at the very end, you know. So I called you on it and you were asking me some things. You looked at it for me and kind of helped me with whether it was going to go through or not. So I appreciate your transparency, by the way, it didn't. And but you were you were you were great help, man. So let's talk about uh, buying these houses in 2023, getting ready. What's the right way to go about doing it, man? You know, I know you can go online and people say, well, all you got to do is this, this, this and this. Right. So how would you if that client was yours, if I brought that client to you, I say, hey, man, disqualify them before you qualify. Them. I mean, make sure they're ready. You know, so sure. what would that look like for you, man? Yeah, I mean, the, the proof is in, in the documents. Right. So, uh, you know, number one, I would say if you're looking to buy a house soon, uh, don't wait to get pre-qualified, even if you're looking in you know, the summer or this fall or even next year uh, by talking to a experienced loan officer you know if once we look at your documents look at your credits if there's anything that needs to be addressed or fixed or worked on you have ample time to work on that right um yeah. you know when on that uh, deal you called me about a couple of weeks ago uh you know you were already in the thick of it and expecting to close right and then something came up you know in a, in a perfect world we would want to address those things um well before they even went to contract let alone right before closing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, you know, um, I was talking to somebody else just not long ago and they said, well, they really don't see themselves buying a house because it's too expensive. You know, maybe they're waiting on some things to go down the prices <laughs> <laughs> or the interest rate. I mean, what would you tell someone who's looking for the, to wait for the interest rate? Yeah. Uh, to me, waiting is a, is a waste of money, right? Um, if timing the market was easy, yeah, everyone would do it and we would all be millionaires, right? Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. The, the proof in the pudding is that um, over the history of time, your primary residence 100% of the time is a moneymaker. 100% mm. of the time. And there's charts. Uh, you can simply Google it. You know, what's the best financial investment you'll ever make? It's buying your primary residence. You will always make money on it. You know, I hear a lot of people, you know, obviously rates uh, doubled up um, during the course of last year. So qualifying uh, was a little bit more uh, difficult than it was in previous years. But at the same time, appreciation went up in Dallas, Fort Worth, 11% last year. Yeah. So if you would have bought a uh, $300,000 house, you'd be sitting on $33,000 in equity opposed to right. paying however much you paid in rent um, during 2022. Yeah. And so, so people don't get, um, you know, I don't know, jump to a conclusion. That's not typical, is it? 11%. 11% mm -hmm. 
No, not yeah. I mean, over the history of time, it's generally five to seven percent. Um, I'm definitely not an economist or an expert, but I think what you'll see in the Dallas Fort Worth area is that there are so many people moving here. The demand will continue to be high and prices will continue to rise, even if the market um, goes down slightly. Yeah. And Dallas Fort Worth, by the way. Yeah, it's you're, you're right. A uh, little bit different from South Texas or Central Texas so far as pricing, availability, all that good stuff. Every market's a little bit different, but this one. DFW, it never stops popping, man. It's just always going. It's always got something going on. But. It is. I mean, they're projecting, um, I think, by 2035 that our population of 8 million right now will be um, 15 million just in the next 12 years. So it's a, a significant jump in a short amount of time. Yeah. So, man, a little bit about you, because, you know, uh, you've been a you've been a great help to me and uh, definitely hooking up with you. By the way, I met you through your dad. You know, your mm -hmm. dad's one that referred me over to you. So, you know, he's a great dude, man. He said, you know, I mean, it's OK, cool. You know, me and your dad go to church together or did go to church together. And he was uh, he's always talking about you. So I said, right, man, let me call him, check with him. So but real estate, man, how long you been? How long have you been uh, a loan officer in this industry? Sure. So I'll, I'll never forget is that um, I started my first mortgage job two days after my son was born, which was September 7th, um, 2000, oh, sorry, September 5th, 2003. So this wow. year, year 20. Yep. I uh, thought I was living in uh, Orlando, Florida at the time. And I was there, uh, um, Orlando and Jacksonville to 2011. And I've been back in Texas where I grew up for the last 11 years now. Wow. Okay. So I've seen so, uh, hey, yeah, also, what, what, everything you can think of. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hear you, man. It's a lot of so, I mean, you went through the, uh, you went through that 2008, 2009 era, mm -hmm. right? And you were in Florida then? Yeah. So we were in one of the hardest hit areas, you know, Florida, California, yeah. Arizona. Hey, people don't believe me when I tell them, man, back in that time, people were giving houses away. It was complete chaos. I mean, I, I also still never, never forget the date. actually, when it actually hit the fan, you know, I mean, it, it, was, yeah. it was chaos everywhere, but yeah, I mean, literally overnight, the you know, houses went down 50%, 60%, 70%. Um, yeah. yeah uh, no, no one was buying, but, but, you know, going back to my earlier comment about your primary residence being your best investment. Well, guess what? 15 years ago, 2008, those houses have now doubled in value, even after they lost 50% of their value in 2008. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so that's a good point. You bring that mm -hmm. up because even in a time like that, when they, and people thought the bottom was just falling out, mm -hmm. man, you know, and I get it, you know, because let's let's just think about that a second, because back in that day, economy was a lot different. Mm -hmm. So people couldn't afford to stay around in that house mm -hmm. or whatever. You had a lot of man, you know, as an investor, I, I used to see it all the time, you know, uh, people buying houses for uh, what we call subject to. Mm -hmm. So subject to the existing loan they purchase. But a lot of times those guys were buying them and the people were leaving, but they weren't paying the note. Mm -hmm. And because it was so backed up, man, those banks were in such trouble. They were they were behind like a year and yeah. even more for foreclosure. So these guys didn't even know that the, their notes weren't getting paid. Yeah, correct. You had it, it, I remember. I mean, I had people or acquaintances or even friends that I knew that hadn't made mortgage payments in multiple years and the banks were so far behind. They yeah. hadn't even got to them to evict them. So they were living, li literally living rent free, for, so to speak for several years yeah. waiting for the banks to catch up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, Hey, definitely a different market, different era mm -hmm. today. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I think people got a little spoiled this <laughs> last year sure. uh, on the seller side, you know, Man, that, I was doesn't, my that brother, doesn't exclude you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Hey, listen, exactly. Uh, I was telling my brother, we were talking because, you know, we started in 07 flipping houses. And, man, we've never seen a market like that. I mean, seriously, houses were on the market not even a day. Mm -hmm. A day and they're gone. Right. And, and sometimes not even, you know. And so, I mean, average days on the market were like two or three days, something like that, in a lot of different areas. Uh, even for houses that need a lot of work, mm -hmm. man, they were just putting anything out there, mm -hmm. and selling, you know, so it's a little bit different now. So, you know, it, it, you know, that's, that's because the money was so cheap, man. Sure, so, 100%. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. what was the lowest interest rate you saw during that time? Um, 
my um, friend's parents uh, got a 1.75 on a 15 year note on their on the primary residence. Oh my gosh, 1.75. Yeah, you could put your money in a savings account and get better interest than that. So that's <laughs> that, that's the, that's the no brainer, right? Why not take this money at uh, you know 1.75 and then I can take even a, a dummy can take uh, their savings and put it into a simple mutual fund or in stock market account and make five or yeah. 10 percent without an issue you know so absolutely mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so man you talk about some giveaway money right there mm -hmm. you know? oh man that's incredible mm -hmm. so now where are we at today yeah what rates are anyway yeah uh, rates are uh, cl closer to seven um you know this time last year i closed on my house actually one year ago today you know okay. we were at three and a quarter right so now you're looking at more like six and a half seven percent so it's different right. but it's it, the, you know, the good thing about the market now is obviously borrowing money is a little bit more expensive, but it has cooled down the market to the extent where sellers are willing to um, make some concessions to make it easier for the buyer. So um, as things have gotten more expensive, even going to the grocery store or buying a house, um, you know, saving money is extremely difficult. Right. So the Absolutely. sellers, the sellers um, you know, recognize that and, and a good real estate agent will. Um, encourage them to maybe pay some closing costs or uh, mm -hmm. things like that, where it's um, way more possible for first time home buyers or even move up buyers to uh, sure. have the affordability to, to get that house. Yeah. Hey, let's do this real quick. Let's do this because I know when I, when I work with different people, everyone's at a different place. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have some that are experienced, some not so much, uh, you know, so everyone's at a different place. So let, let's give them a quick rundown, Matt. Let's just say I'm a first time home buyer mm -hmm. and I want to, I have my eyes set on a house in, let's just say Midlothian, Mansfield. Okay. I'll just go with those areas closer to me. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I'll go with those areas. And I want to, I want to go with a house about, I'm seeing they're going to be about 450. Mm -hmm. okay, right. I come to you. I say, Matt, man, I want to get a pre-approved, uh, for one of those places, tell me, man, walk me through what's the first thing that you guys go and do? Sure. So first things, you know, we're going to get on the phone and I'm going to learn um, as much as I can about you. You know, uh, it's one thing to look at things analytically and, and know the numbers. I can do that very, very well. But more importantly, more than anything is learning the client and, it, it, you know, trying to establish exactly what their goal is. Right. What, what are you attempting to do? So we'll get on the phone and figure out what's the goal, you know, and trying to hit a certain price payment, you know. Uh, that type of thing. Um, and, and ultimately, we're, we're going to go through the pre-approval process, which is, you know, looking at credits, income, assets, that type of stuff, and determine, you know, what you can qualify for, how much money it's going to take, and so on. Okay. So what are the factors on a credit score? Like um, somebody says, well, I've got a, a, a late pay here and there. Um, you know, how much does that really take away? Uh, the more the recent, so late payments, you know, uh, it, it depends on what type of account. So on a mortgage, that's pretty detrimental. A late payment on a mortgage could easily drop your credit score 100 points that quick. Really? Uh, wow. 100% or, or more, right? So um, the more recent the late payment is, the more impact it has to your credit score. So okay. uh, even things like charge-offs and collections, if they're two, three, five, seven years old, they really don't have too much of an impact anymore. But mm -hmm. lenders are very much, um, especially since things have changed so much in the last 24 months, you know, looking at what have you done for me lately, right? <laughs> How does yeah, it look yeah. three months ago? You know, right? Were you late on your car payment? Were you late on credit cards? Um, you know, if it's over 12 months, there's a lot more flexibility. Okay. So would you recommend someone go to like, uh, what is it, annualcreditreport.com? I believe it's the free. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and we even have the access uh, at Cross Country Mortgage to do a soft credit pool, meaning that we are pulling, uh, opposed to pulling all three bureaus and it dings your credit, right? We can do a soft pool to one credit bureau, but it kind of gives us an idea um, of exactly what you're up against. And that's a yeah. um, something that a lot of people are, are taking advantage of right now because it does not impact your credit score at all. Cool. It's a way for us to definitely make those um, um, changes or, you know, uh, kind of put you on the path of where you need to go. Yeah. You know, interesting, you know, credit score. I think about credit, you know, when, when we start, we start with the credit score, mm -hmm. running your credit. But here's a, this is something that you were telling me about uh, a little while back. I pull my credit. Let's just say I, I pull it and it's at a 650, man. Mm -hmm. And you come back and say, okay, so now you're at a 620. Mm -hmm. 
So explain that to me, man. Why, sure. why are we seeing something different? Yeah, no, it's a really good question. I answer this question uh, multiple times a week. Um, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but basically like if I go on to my banking app on my phone or my credit card app on my phone, it's like, hey, see your credit score. I'm like, yeah, let's see what it is. Um, that scoring model that those banks and credit cards and credit unions are using is basically called a retail scoring system, right? Yeah. It is a different scoring system than what mortgage companies use. So they put a different amount of weights on uh, certain things. I don't know, obviously, the exact algorithm, but um, you know, they pay may pay more attention to length of history, whereas a mortgage company may not care as much. You know, they may put more weight on late payments from two years ago, whereas we might not. You know, so they are scored a little bit differently. I see. Which is unfortunate because, you know, in this country, if you want to, um, you know, be wealthy or financially successful, you're not going to be able to get anything without good credit. So I definitely think uh, the system should be revamped to some certain extent. Absolutely. No, I agree. So, OK, so they run the credit re credit report or they come to you, you pull their credit. Yeah. Next thing. OK. And we're talking about debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. Help me to better understand a debt to income ratio. Well, sure. I'm, I'm brand new in this thing and you tell me. Maybe yeah, no, it, 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 it's a much. really good question. And, and uh, debt to income ratio with rates uh, going up last year uh, became a, a way bigger factor than it has in the past. Um, so different programs do have debt to income ratio uh, guidelines. But the main uh, functionality is, is we're going to estimate what your house payment is on the house that you are going to look at. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to add all of your credit card payments, car payments, student loans, whatever the case may be. And then we're going to divide that by how much your monthly income is. I see. Generically speaking, um, you know, there's different programs, but generically speaking, you know, 50% or less is what that number needs to be. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are, you know it, it can go higher, but usually there has to be like uh, some circumstances like, hey, I, you know, after I close, I'll still have, 50 grand in the bank. Like, okay. Well, we'll maybe we'll go up to 55% now. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. So definitely a number to, to uh, understand, but if someone's working with you, you're going to walk them through it and explain it to them and give them that number where to be. 100%. Yeah. So here, here's the big one though. I mean, I, I think they're all big. Mm -hmm. I really do. Especially if you listen for, for guys that don't know, when you get into the home buying process, it can be a lot of stress. There's a lot of stress. And here's one of the things that I hear the most. Okay. So I'm just going to share it with you. Mm -hmm. I've already sent that paperwork to the lender. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why do they keep asking for stuff over and over? So yeah. Um, what I tell them, hold on. What I tell them, Matt, yeah. I say, hey, keep a folder on your computer mm -hmm. and send it again. Keep that stuff in there. Again, so tell us, tell us why that continues to happen. Yeah. Along the way. Man, it, that, that is, I'm sorry, that is a great question. And, uh, I mean, obviously, even as a loan officer for 20 years, I've applied for mortgages and they're like, hey, I need this you know, January bank statement. We're like, dude, I, I already sent it, you know, but yeah. um, one thing um, you talked about it when you first introduced me and I really appreciate it is, you know, I answer the phone when you call. Right. Yeah. Um, sometimes what get, gets lost in translation is, um, you know, you did send that document or what you thought to be the correct document, but it, it wasn't right. And no one at the mortgage company explained to you why that particular document um, was not sufficient, right? So it's important um, that the loan officer and his team, when they're asking for documents, to take a little bit more time and explain why, right? If you explain yeah. why you need a document or what was missing from the previous document, it's going to make a lot more sense opposed to just generically asking for the same thing over and over again. And everyone gets frustrated, right? <laughs> Jake, dude, I already sent it, man. And maybe you did, you know, you probably did. But hey, maybe it was missing one page or maybe there is, you know, something, you know, that, you know, when you scan the pages in, you know, something got blurred or, or something. So it's important to ask why, yeah. you know, to go over those particular issues. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I appreciate you, man, sharing that. And yeah, it, it can be very frustrating. Mm -hmm. I know uh, people do get frustrated with that. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to tell people every time we get started, say, Hey, let's, this is going to be a process. Mm -hmm. There are people working behind the scenes to help this process go smooth for you. So you don't, we're trying to really, we aim to take away the stress from them. Sure. We'll go ahead and, 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 and take it upon ourselves because we know it could be frustrating back in the back, mm -hmm. but, and just keep working things out, but just hang on. We're going to get there. We're looking for uh, our favorite words 
not only as an agent or a lender, but as the buyer or the seller, everybody likes to hear clear to close. Clear to close. <laughs> so, so we're looking for the clear to close, right? Most beautiful, <laughs> beautiful words in the American language. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's been a great uh, mm. privilege having you on, man. Hey, let me let me put this out there for you, Matt. If somebody wants to come uh, hang out with you or get to know a little bit more about you, I've got you uh, your things there on the screen, but it's at Massey Mortgage. Um, and that's Instagram, right? Instagram, correct. And if it's on Facebook, you're at Matthew Massey CCM. That's for cross country mortgage. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. At I mean, Matthew Matthew Matthew. around a little bit. If I just Google my name and put Matthew Massey mortgage, all, all the things come up right away. On, on a yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, if you want someone to help you out to get yourself ready to buy a house in 2023, uh, not only can I help you out, man, I love working uh, with you guys and buying houses and everything. It's fun. But Matt, I love working with Matt, man. He's uh, like I told you before, he dude likes to get down and do some work. So he's not mm -hmm. afraid to answer that phone and uh, we can work on it together for you and with you and hope to see you through. Mm -hmm. We're all looking for the clear to close. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, but there's a great way to get with him there uh, on the screen. But I'll also give you this. Uh, if you're needing help. Um with obtaining a, a mortgage you want to get pre-approved you can also just give me a send a text to 411 mm that's that's for this episode so 411 mm that's for matt massey mm -hmm. at 817-230-4227 that's for you guys listening in today nothing but earbuds don't don't i need you to pull over don't don't, don't try to do it here <laughs> so it's 817-230-4227 you just text 411-MM, and we will get back with you shortly and help you along the way. Matt, hey, man, I hope you have a great year. How's everything been going so far this year, though? It's been, I mean, a, a hot start to the year. Um, so looking forward to uh, having a great 2023. So. Awesome. Hey, man, you got something coming up uh, uh, with your pops this, this Sunday, yeah. right? Come on. Yeah, so <laughs> my old man is uh, – Seriously, he turns 76 this year. He got okay. baptized uh, when he was eight years old. And I, I think he made the comment he barely remembers, right? So he yeah, decided yeah. to get <laughs> re-baptized, which I, I think is great. He asked us to be there. So we'll definitely be there at the church Sunday morning to, to watch it all go down. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. You know, Art's a good buddy, man. Mm -hmm. I love old Art and your dad, man. He's a great dude. So, hey, man, I'm, I'm praying for you, pulling for you and your business this year, man. And, of course, I can't wait to work with you again. Mm -hmm. For all of you guys who are in tuning in, you have been tuning in to the Texas Real Estate Jake podcast. My name's Jake, and I can't wait to serve you and help you. But here it is. I tell people all the time, man, in real estate, it's about location, location, location. And this is what that really means. It's not about the house. That means if it ain't working for you, it's probably time to move around. Okay, so let me help you move around and, and get things done the way that you want to here in 2023. Okay. Hey, God bless you. We'll talk to you next time. You guys take care. Thanks, Jake. You bet.